Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. While I was away, I got a wonderful email from a chap here called Mike. Hi, Mike. And we were conversing a little bit. And this is the note that came in a package that just arrived. It said, hi, Andrew. As promised, one Micronta range doubler multi-tester in near mint condition. Hopefully you'll be able to get it working and use it in your future videos. Damn right I'll be getting it working and using it in my future videos because I kind of rely, although I've got loads lying around that I can't seem to find, I rely on my Isotech IDM19. Ding! No, I don't, I'm not, well, I am kind of endorsing this in that it's a really good uh, unit and I've had it for like years and years and years and years. It, I love it. It is good and they're pretty cheap. Uh, I don't know where I got it from, CPC, RS, usual places. But uh, I can never find... Uh, meter when I need it and I've just sort of lent back I literally I swear I swear on my life I literally just lent back as I was saying this and found these <laughs> um, so before I just go on to that I'm sort of slightly distracted now um, let's see if this one works continuity I'm not hearing a noise maybe I have to do function okay that one seems to be working great uh, remember this one broke because the little pin retractor stopped working but I'll keep that one a bit stabby that's the problem with that one great that's pretty much very similar to the isotech in terms of functionality and then I've got this one which is the old sort of stalwart type um, oh no it's, I was going to think it needs new batteries but actually that's pretty good and that's the old mass tech uh, unit too. So I'm talking out of my Aris because I do have multimeters and they are actually next to me. I'm just too stupid. <laughs> I, I just literally went out to get this from the car earlier because I didn't bloody think. Anyway, enough of that. Let's look at uh, wonderful mics. Uh, Mike Ronta. Mike Ronta. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've never really known how to, to sort of pronounce this. I believe these were from Tandy or Radio Shack because we, we had Mike Ronta ones. I do remember having a, a small one of these. 43 ranges, 50,000 ohms per volt DC, 10,000 ohms per volt AC, 20 position range function switch including off. You always need the off, save your batteries. Easy to read mir mirror meter with coloured coded scales. That's because there's a mirror behind there so that you can see the, the needle reflecting in the mirror so it's like a kind of weird parallaxy thing that helps you out built-in overload protective circuitry and look it is it is mint this box I, I don't even know if I can use this mic because it's so gorgeous but uh, I'll use it but I'm not going to use it like mistreat it because it's it's oh I don't know look at it it's near mint man it's near mint um, oh okay I've just been excited by something else in the box. This is the unit itself and it really is near mint. It's so mint I don't even want to put it on my crappy thing where it'll get all scratched up and scraped but oh, let's leave it there gingerly. The probes again never been used. Is this never been used? I mean I'm not seeing finger cheese in any of these button bits. I'm seeing a little bit of scratching here but it, it is it's almost never been used I'd say. A uh, ever ready calculator battery that feels super light and a crusty 9 volt battery Cheers for those I'm gonna put those aside I might not use those let's have a look at the pepper work so this is a handwritten customer receipt from Tandy Mr. Rance, 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 Rance can't quite read that but it costs 19 pounds 95 and look it was 20 catalog description is 22.204 date 9 19th of the 8th 1976 so this was 20 pounds in 1976 and by today's money that means it's worth over a million pounds or thereabouts so you have here the tandy guarantee card that i don't know if we fill that in if we'll get that because i'm pretty sure tandy don't work any uh, work anymore exist anymore even although i think i've seen a few radio shacks when i was in the uh, us let's put that in there because that it's worth preserving it's all worth preserving it's wonderful bubble wrap I'm not sure the bubble wrap is authentic I think that might have been added by Mike because bubble wrap didn't really exist in those days so the battery I think that was where that came in so these were the operational batteries and you know what? I'm it's cute to have a period battery but I don't know if I want to keep this this Duracell is pretty much stand like any other even modern day Duracell been that they haven't changed much in that might keep hold of that ever ready bad battery for fun wow 
old school silica gel that's in a sort of tea bag. A bit of tea bagging there. And the manual. The Emmanuel. Look at that. All of the instructions using your multi tester. They're calling it a multi tester. AC voltage measurement, resistance measurements, DC current measurements, all of the measurements. I think it's time to actually, though, have a look and see how to get this working. So I'm going to forget this working. Put our little stuff down. That's quite nice. Lay it down on its bed of goodness. I can see a couple of screws in there. A couple of screws like. Now I could look in the uh, instructions and see how one is supposed to do this, but I'm, you know, let's wing this. I think we're going to be okay somehow. Wowee, look at that. Never been used. Okay, so far, no good. Oh, two screws, machine head, pan head, machined pan head screws. Internally, ooh, there is a bit of crustification molded in Japan. So I've got here some silicone, just because that's the most handiest thing I just seem to have in a dirty old cloth. And I'm just gonna rub it on the inside, just because I saw a bit of detritus there. And uh, I'm just gonna clean that off. Right, we've got some crusts here. So you've got a uh, normal AA cell here and then just a standard 9 volt, so good. I'm not sure why it's got two. Probably because it's using as a reference voltage and it needs a bit more. Most things you see nowadays just have the uh, one or t'other. So I'm going to use power crazy, power crazy scrapers. Now we're going to scrape away a little bit on this. In fact, just... I'm eyeballing it at all the angles here. I'm giving it an eyeball at all the angles because I want to just check. If it's possible for me to remove this, I will because there's no filth anywhere else apart from on this contact. And that's if I brush it, it's just going to create mess. Whereas this, it is absolutely mint in there. I'm just seeing if I can just. Maybe I'm going to do it this way, but it's so blue, that colour. It's like a. Ultramarine. It's coming off in chunks. Psychic spies from China try to steal your man's illusion. Right, that's just a real superficial, but look, that's cool. It's actually, um, it's actually kind of just working on the surface. It doesn't seem to be actually pitted in. It's an interesting bit of corrosion. I will admit, I've not seen that kind of corrosion before, and never the like will be seen again, lad. Let's go to a, a sort of fiberglass rubber. Rubber, rubber, rubber. King or rubber tutu. -tu. I think that's pretty good, actually. Let's, uh, I'm just going to give it a dab in, a dibby dabby dob in, a dibby dabby dob in. <laughs> Ugh. Did Dobby do good, Master Potter? Did Dobby do good? Yes, Dobby. You're so very good, Dobby. Dobby, Dobby's happy now. Master, Dobby will die now. Bye. And that was the entirety of Harry Potter. Right, let's uh, give this one more little rub down. I would normally use a chemical, but I'm not going to bother. <laughs> I think it's absolutely fine. If in doubt, you could always use a bit of vinegar. I find a bit of vinegar works. Spit and polish, a bit of vinegar. And we'll grab some batteries. Got some batteries right there, so. Oh, I only need the one of these. Maybe I've got a one line around. No, let's just go for it. Now I've got a one line around. Let's pop that in there. Minus, plus. Hmm. <laughs> Hey little hen, when, when, when will you lay me an egg for my tea? Do, 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 do. Will you try to supply one for me? Get that in. Boom. Booyaka. 
Boo shaka laka 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 boom. It's all in. Both batteries are in. Let's flip this over. <laughs> blow on it. Go always got to blow on it. <laughs> Using the old Nintendo cartridge trick. Mm. Okay, well I saw the needle kind of move a little bit. Let's pop that in there. Pop that in there. So yeah, the one I'm sure we had was a tiny little one, like a pocket multimeter and it was kind of very much like this one but just a pocket version and I wonder if it still exists because if it does it would be nice to have it as a sort of companion look it's just got a nice kickstand and everything everything that's wonderful you're wonderful right mm -hmm. in fact let's take our battery that we had and use that as a reference voltage we shall use it as a reference voltage, Gromit. That was the worst Wallace and Gromit impression I've ever heard. So we'll put it on the, no, the 2.5 volt range. So this should be, you know, kind of halfway up-ish. Ooh, there's, whoa, hang on, we maxed it out. Hang on, am I, am I losing me in mind? Hmm. Let's put it on the 10 volt range then. I'm kind of confused. Let's see where we are with this. I have to admit, it's been a while since I've had to read a needly meter. So now I'm holding it on there, right? So we've got our 1 volt. Let's have a look, see if we can figure out what these ranges are doing. So you've got 2, 10, 25, and 50, but that doesn't make sense, is it? Ah, there we go. Is this this doubler thing? Um, or am I just in the wrong hole? No. Hmm. Okay. So let's now see if we can run it. If this bottom scale, if that's two volts, I don't want to scratch the screen. Be careful. Whoa. Hello. What's all that about? We need to sanity check ourselves. We need to insanity check. So I've got this other voltmeter on. I'm going to try to jam all these different probes into my fingers at once. Right, so we're looking at 1.6 volts when it's at home. And it's not the needle's not moving around. I'm 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 actually stumped here. DC amps DC AC volts resistance. Now we're definitely in the volts scale here. Okay, so if that's 0.25, that means quarter of a volt is that whole range, yeah? If this is 2.5, that means this whole range is 2.5 volts. So you'd expect to see this sitting somewhere in the middle, and it is now. I just think these probes just maybe there's a bit of tarnish on them. They seem to be a bit better now. Right, good. So let's think where would we be then? If that's 2.5, but that's saying it's kind of 1.25, 1 1 it's moving around. It's saying it's pretty much just over one volt though. So I'm not quite convinced because we do, we have seen that uh, on this meter. But look, you see there's a mirror. I just want to show you that. It's really, maybe it's too hard for you to see, but I'll just show it now. There you go. It's hard for you to see, but if you're not, totally aligned you'll see a shadow on the mirror like a reflection and I, I I'm, I'm kind of leaning at an angle and I can see let's see if I can emulate that yeah see the mirror behind there's a line that's the line you use so you're not looking at the top you're looking at the reflection on the mirror and that's how that mirror action works look the volts are going up now now it's at nearly one po ah. <laughs> let's let's try this again I'm going to try another little trick here because that's it's obviously wavering around a bit. I'm going to stab the battery, literally stab it in the ends with the probes. Let's see. Arr, I can't stab it anymore. So that means it's nearly at uh, 1.5 volts. It's reading 1.2, 3, 4. Uh, I don't know. Is that 1.2? Four volts, one point three, something like that. It's, it's mind-boggling. I'm going to have to learn this up 
but so far it looks good i think it's there's nothing wrong with this i think that's just it's just how it is right now and i've got to learn how to use it but that is a wonderful piece of kit thank you so much mike i um i'm blown away by that and i i promise you i will learn how to use this and we will feature this in a future uh, video because i do firmly believe that some of these needle meters can do all sorts of interesting things like if you've got a rectifier problem on a on a car or uh, even just you're testing a, an ac type circuit you can see the needle dancing you need to see the needle dancing so if you expect it to be dc for example and there's actually an ac there because there's a problem with the rectifier you'll you'll see that needle do some do some tricks and that's what we're we're aiming to see with this so I hope that's been of some use to you. If you've got a meter like this and you know how it works, please feel free to comment down below and say, Andrew, you're doing it wrong, you idiot. You've got to do X, Y, Z or whatever, and I'll do that. Please like, share, subscribe. And if you're, uh, keep saying this, but if you're that way inclined, actually, I would like you to go on Twitter and say, Andrew, you are an idiot. Do that. With a smiley face, though, because I know it's a joke then. Thanks for watching.